it comes to baptism, we make two mistakes. There are those who say baptism in water isn't that big of a deal because your salvation does not depend upon it. I can be saved without being baptized in water, but you cannot be obedient to the commandment of Jesus Christ. And then there are those who say, go to the other extreme and say, you cannot be saved unless you've been baptized in water, and neither one of them is the correct way to see it. Jesus, the first thing that Jesus did in his earthly ministry was get baptized in water. And when he came out of the water, the heavens opened and the Holy Spirit in the form of a dove came down upon him. But the first thing that he did in his earthly ministry was model water baptism for you and I. The last thing that Jesus did after he died and rose from the dead and he's going up on a cloudy elevator to intercede for you and me at the right hand of the Father, the last words was go into all the world, Matthew 28, and preach the gospel to all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The last thing Jesus said was I want you to be baptized, immersed in water. I want you to go down and come up completely in water through baptism. We dare not minimize what Jesus so emphasized. But in Mark chapter 1 and verse 9, now this was the baptism of Jesus when he came from Nazareth to Jordan. Jordan was a river. And it says in verse 10, straightway he came up out of the water. Now if he came up out of the water, guess where he was? He was down in completely in and under the water. It was not convenient for Jesus to get baptized. And that's why people don't do it a lot of times. It's just inconvenient. It's inconvenient. It's a little bit awkward. It's, it's kind of, I mean, it's, it was, Jesus traveled 60 miles from Nazareth to the Jordan River, 60 miles. It was not convenient, and he did it for one reason, because he knew it was the will of the Father for him to be baptized in the Jordan River by John the Baptist. And it's not convenient. If you just had your hair done, ladies, a $200 hairdo, and you got to get in here and mess it up, no thank you. I don't feel God speaking to me today about that. Uh, I, I get it. I get it. But I'm just telling you, it will never be convenient. Sometimes God doesn't want it to be convenient. He told, Naam, he told Naaman, the general who had leprosy, get in the Jordan River and dip seven times. And he said, there's got to be an easier way. I don't want to do it. God said, you do it my way, you get my results. He came up and he had skin like a baby's skin that was leprous before. And the point is, many times God doesn't make it convenient to kill your pride. Baptism requires, biblical baptism requires a lot of water. It requires a lot of water. And it, the word baptism means to be submerged, to go under. All the early Christians were baptized, even in the earliest cathedrals that they have found that go back to the 2nd and 3rd and, and 14th century Christians, they had baptistries built in them because they practiced what Jesus, the role model, showed them to do. Now let me give you this real quick, and then we're going to do this. In Romans chapter 6, this is what it says. It says, it gives a biography of your future. It shows your past. It shows this, this, this baptism tank shows your past. It shows your present, and it shows your future. And let me tell you what I'm, what I'm talking about in that. Because he said in verse 3 that we're baptized into Jesus Christ and we die. Look at that. He says when we're baptized into Jesus Christ, we're baptized into his death. So when you go down in the water, you are, you are baptized into his death. What this is is a watery tomb, literally, in God's eyes. And the old you is being buried under the water. The old you, we are about to have the funeral of about 20 plus people on this stage. And nobody will be crying except the devil. He'll have his handkerchief out. He's going to grieve bad. And he's going to say, I lost another one. I lost another one. There the old goes, that drug addict. There he goes. And he's coming. Now that's the past. And then he says in the next verse, and we baptize them and they come out. Notice the last part. In newness of life. 
That's the present. So you go down and your past, your shame, your guilt, your, your, the power of the enemy, the defeat, you go down in that, you come up in newness of life, and then he ends the story with the next verse by showing you your future when he says, and just as we have all will one day be planted together in the likeness of his death, we're all going to die, and they're going to put us in the ground like they put Jesus in the tomb, but we shall also in the likeness of his resurrection. And he's all tying that to this baptism place. And he says, what that is saying is, not only is your past taken care of, not only only have you come to newness of life in the present, but I've got your future. And one of these days, if the Lord tarries, you die and they put your body in the grave, the trumpet is going to sound and you have resurrection power in you that not only will raise your spirit instantly goes to be with God, but your body will be raised on that day out of the ground and out of the grave. That's the miracle. The last thing I want to say to you about baptism and why it's so important is because it proclaims your identification with Jesus Christ publicly. It's like the wedding ring. This, this wedding ring says, I belong to Sharice. It says, I, it doesn't make me married. The ring doesn't make me married. I have a marriage certificate. I have, we had a ceremony. We have 34 years of living together, but, but, and we did what we did before God. He, that's what made us married, but here's what it does. It doesn't make me married. It shows publicly that I am married. That's exactly what this is. This doesn't make you saved. You can go down a dry center and come up a wet center. There's nothing magical in this water that will make you saved, but it identifies with the fact that you belong to Jesus Christ. He is your Savior, and you're going public with it. You're going public with it. You belong to Him. That's what water baptism is. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure that you subscribe to our channel so that you can get notifications on new posts and live streams. Be sure to share this video with a friend. You never know how you can send the Word of God right when somebody needs to hear it. And you can use your social influence for good, for the glory of God. Thanks again. Share it with a friend. And I really appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time.